Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel, long time no see. Today's video is going to be about how to get an A in advanced higher biology, so let's just get started. I always like to start off these kind of videos with a course breakdown because it is quite useful, especially if you're maybe just starting advanced higher biology or you're thinking of doing it and you want to learn a bit more about um, how the course is laid out. So the course is kind of laid out in kind of three big units. Um, which is what how we studied it. There are two components to the kind of assessment of the course. So you have one paper that you set, which is three hours long, which is probably kind of the longest exam to date that you'll set. And I don't know if any of the other advanced hires have exams that long. So it's a bit of a, an, an endurance thing you have to get ready for, which is three hours is quite a long time. And then you also have your project. So the exam accounts for 75%. Um, 20 marks come from the MCQ section and 80 marks come from the extended response, kind of structured um, response questions. And then the project is 30 marks. It's worth 15%. So 75%, 15%. Um, I don't really have any specific tips for the project just because I didn't do it. Um, but from kind of looking at the course spec and kind of reading around it, I would just say look at the marking sheet um, and do not exceed the word count. The word count is 3000 to 3600. This is all in the course spec. Um, I would stick to that definitely because 10, uh, because you don't want to lose marks for something so easily controllable, which is the word count. Project overview section of the course spec literally has exactly where you're getting the mark so so like when you're doing your report go through this mark okay i've got an abstract it states the main aims and findings or the overall findings i'm good i've got that one mark and you go through it like that and then you're guaranteeing yourself that okay i will get the mark for this i will get the mark for this i will get the mark for this even things like there's two marks from presentation which is quite i would say something really easy to change um, to achieve, especially if you're aiming, aiming for an A in advanced higher biology, you've got to pick up the marks wherever you can. So yes, it's only 15% of the project's worth, but it should be like, you should be aiming to get as high amount of marks as you can. Um, yeah, that basically makes sense. So even things like appropriate structure, having a title, contents page, page numbers, referencing, citing, even working with your teacher to make sure you've got that. It's always good to go into the exam it gives you a bit of a boost a bit of confidence that yeah you've got a good amount of marks already secured so that's kind of the course breakdown um it is a continuation of higher biology in higher human biology meaning if you've took those hires any of those hires you can progress on to advanced higher biology the only thing i'd say is um where i did my advanced hires some people had done higher human versus some people like myself had done higher biology and the people with higher human did have a little bit of kind of maybe like extra knowledge or just like extra awareness around some of the topics because they were covered kind of briefly in higher human. I don't know if that's still the case because the course content may have changed since I studied it and that didn't like it wasn't that big of a negative but just to let you know that if you have done higher human there may be things that you're more familiar with coming up. I hope that I'm not really repeating myself too much because a lot of the kind of resources I use for other subjects I have also used for advanced higher biology but if this is the first video you're watching of me then you won't know any of the other tips hopefully so that's a plus. Um, so first of all I would say the course spec I'll pop it up here I'll scroll through it it's basically something that you should be uh, referring to a lot I refer to a lot it basically even before you think of studying advanced higher biology um have a look on the page see what the course content is you can figure out everything you need to know basically is in there what I found helpful was especially in the advanced biology one the um course spec is so specific so things that you just literally need to know things like Viruses are parasites that can only replicate inside a host cell. That is literally like a statement that you just need to know. Like they could easily, easily ask that on an exam and be like, define viruses, really easy recall that they can ask you. So I would really look into this. And even when you're revising, like I would have the course spec open, you can go through it and tick it off. So things like, okay, 
I know this tick or green for I know this amber I don't really know this red I don't guess at all and you can also go down and tick it when you're like yes I've got this in my notes no I've not got this in my notes I've got a flashcard for this I've not got a flashcard for this so I would definitely definitely kind of look through this use this for your re revision in whatever way you'd like to um but I don't know I mean maybe everyone knows the course spec exists and um use it, is it to their to its full potential but definitely something that uh is really useful i also wanted to mention for myself especially um at uni we have ilos which are intended learning outcomes which are quite similar to um the kind of course specifications um in advanced higher biology so if you get used to the course spec then you can kind of prepare yourself for uni as well if that's um kind of where you're heading after doing this well, my next kind of resource is understanding standards which is also on the sqa website um, i think it's kind of more designed for teachers and educators however it's it's public domain like anyone um can access it and I found this helpful for kind of other um, subject areas as well. I think it's quite helpful for the project because it um, gives you examples of evidence that people have done. So there's a whole page on um, examples of aims and it would outline, yes, this person would get the mark because they done da 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 da, da or this person would not get the mark because of etc. So it's, I would say a really kind of helpful resource if you're kind of stuck with how to start and what a good example would be like obviously do not copy it do not plagiarize at all um but yeah even having a wee look around understanding standards really helpful for the projects um for the understanding standards um it also has a project from 2019 uh the full project i think so you can look through that and kind of see what an example um project looks like um maybe helpful maybe not it's worth having kind of a quick look um on understanding standards is also evidence of candidates responses um to exam papers and kind of analysis of that as well so if you are like if you do want like an example of how someone would answer a um paper then you could have a wee look at that as well and there's also something new on the sk website that i they i didn't have when i was setting my advanced hires but it is called you share open learning resources so it is essentially you share brings you links to open learning resources that have been recommended by lecturers teachers and learners that support sqa qualifications so it's essentially what i'm doing on here um but people can add that on so things like past papers youtube channels um bbc bite size podcasts um, loads and loads of things that can be useful that real life people have um, put on. The next kind of resource, um, if you've watched any of my kind of science-y videos before, you will know this, Jabchem all the way. Jabchem, if you don't know what Jabchem is, it's this wonderful website that has past papers for kind of chemistry, physics, maths, biology, and they go back years. Like I'm talking before me and you were even born um and it's just really really useful to have loads of past papers that you can go through the only caveat i would say is that some of the older past papers um have extra kind of content that maybe we don't cover in the course anymore or they do say the older papers are usually harder so i mean take it with a grain of salt i would always do the most recent papers first and then work your way backwards and if you've got time then you can go way way way, way back um but the most useful ones will be the most recent ones because they'll be laid out in a style that your exam will be um in the sense that the way the way the questions are asked the way the problem solving questions are worded um the, the content that's covered but if you need more kind of um resources and more past papers to do then jab chem has them all also someone on my one of my other videos i think it was my chemistry video um said that they worked with jab chem and i was like oh my god that was insane please tell whoever runs jab chem thank you because yeah i'd love to meet jab chem one day and like interview them and be like how does it feel to have saved the lives of so many students so another kind of tip slash resource i would say is any kind of good flash card making app because i felt like this is talking from personal experience the jump from higher to advanced higher was a lot like higher 
biology did have a lot of content but it felt kind of manageable making my notes in class along with the teacher um that felt like fine and manageable however when we stepped up to advanced higher biology there's just so so much content that I, I've, I became overwhelmed really fast and I felt like I couldn't really make my mind maps or I couldn't really make just kind of written notes because there was just so much content. So I pivoted to Anki. This is my first time using Anki. Um, if you've not heard about Anki, it's essentially a flashcard making app. It has um, space repetition. Um, therefore you do Anki. The, the kind of notion and the idea is that you do Anki every single day, but Anki's kind of algorithm or whatever it's coding is that it will show you the cards that you find harder more and the cards that you um know better kind of less but they will come up but they'll come up in spaced and kind of spaced intervals another flashcard making app, app that probably everyone's heard of is quizlet so my next tip is learning um which is something i've mentioned in one of my other videos and it's literally what the word is blurting so what you do is you take a kind of key area and you write that key area down and you put in everything that you remember about that key area um so if it was about parasites you put everything you know about parasites and once you feel like you've exhausted everything that you know then you go in with a different colored pen and you add in bits so like you remembered malaria but like, what is malaria caused by? Plasmodium, you forgot that. So you'd write that in with another um, colour of pen. And I feel like that's just a really good way of kind of like recalling um, information. It's a good way of kind of revising. And then you can kind of gauge how much you know about Acadia. And then you might be, if there's not much on the page, you might have to be like, oh, I have to go back and um, maybe watch a video to refresh my knowledge go through my kind of flashcards again for that area um but if it feels like you are writing everything down it's coming you know very naturally to you then it might be time to attempt some questions some past verbal questions from that area um to see how well you can apply your knowledge another thing that is very very useful which i also mentioned in another video is a glossary so i had a really really great teacher um in advanced herbology if you're watching this hello um she was just the best she'd um print out kind of all the notes that we needed no like she'd print out like, all the powerpoint slides and would also have um kind of this is like a glossary so you'd have the term and then you'd match it up obviously to the um definition and another point of a blurting blurting is basically the kind of essays that you have in the extended answer paper so if you scroll through and through the papers an example of a past paper you would see kind of like a paragraph of text and then you'd kind of talk about it and that's quite simple is describe the structure of viruses and explain why they're classified as parasites so that's kind of your key areas of parasites and you're essentially when you're blurting you are basically doing the essay so even if you take the kind of essay questions and put them kind of all the essay questions from the years um previous and put them in a word doc and just use that as blurting you can make up your own essay questions and then swap them with friends so you've got even more um so that's good because they are quite like a lot of marks um that you can get doing the essays i think we were told um kind of the key area that our essays were going to be in so we could literally prepare for that and get you could basically i think guarantee kind of the marks that you were getting um because you knew what it was obviously when you go into the exam you will not know but doing that kind of this way kind of ensures that you've kind of covered any of the possibilities that may come up um there's also talk about um we when i went into the exam my kind of tactic was to do the essays first because i did know what they were and i did kind of i was revising that information in my head before the exam so it was easy for me to just go in and blurt everything out like write it all down um on the exam booklet but it's i think worth kind of playing about if you have time um when you're doing your past paper questions to see do you prefer maybe going to the essays first and answering them and getting all the info down or do you prefer just working it through working through it kind of methodically like from the beginning to the end um but that's something to think about you may want to like go in and do your essays first and get them out of the way um, because they require a lot of kind of info dumping rather than problem solving or trying to understand the information you've been taught in another context um, in the exam. So yeah, that's something to have a think about.
so the last kind of tip or trick that I have is analysing past people questions. So this is kind of done when you've reached a point of you kind of know the knowledge pretty well, you're kind of deep into exam revision and you are doing full length kind of past papers. Um, what I did was I did them kind of untimed first and then I did them timed and wrote down how long it took me to do them. Personally I wasn't really pushed for time um, because it was three hours and I felt like I could comfortably finish my exam in that amount of time but if that's something you struggle with you can work on that um, practicing past papers in the house. Now, you may be wondering what do I mean by kind of analysing past papers? Um, it's essentially when you go through them I've got an example here, um, so I'd write down what the kind of year was, um, I'd write down how long it took me, um, how long I had to, to, to do it, and I'd write down what attempt it was, so like this is my first attempt at the 2019 paper, um, this is a multiple choice question section, um, but the real kind of info came in when I started the kind of extended answers, so I'd go through it, I'd write down kind of where I got things wrong, add in kind of info that I needed to get the mark and I'd be quite strict with myself um, because I always felt like it was better to be stricter and get a lower mark than kind of, I don't know, have a false sense of security. I mean it was pretty, like marking biology is pretty straightforward um, um, because if it's straight recall then you either know it or you don't know it. Um, but yeah, and I'd practice all of them and I'd go through and I'd mark it. And then at the end, I would always um, write down kind of things that I need to work on. So specific key areas that I might need to work on. Um, and that would kind of be what I'd do. So I have all of these from, I have loads more from each every, every year. I'd also do this thing where if I'd done a passport a few times or if I didn't really have time to do the full paper I would go through um especially the multiple choice section and be like I'm not gonna answer it but I know that I know that this question is from key area 3.1 and I'd know the answer because I know that area well it's not kind of ideal but it is something that you can quickly go through and be like tick 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 if you see a question that comes up and you're totally caught off guard like oh I definitely don't remember anything about the key area then that's something that you'd uh, need to go over. But thank you so much for watching. Um, if you have any recommendations on what video I should do next, let me know. Um, and yeah, I'm going to say goodbye.